sound advice and Lynn's advice and and contacts you and uh, and that she moves forward with it. And Swanda, I'll put my email on the the chat list. And if you can't find it there, I think I'm uh, member number 42 at Eucadia. You can find the member list. My email is there. Just email me, and then we'll we'll start conversation. Maybe I can help you. Oh, Frank, yeah. how soon will you have the will and testament documents completed? Good, great question. Uh, I'm having it apps, and I mean this absolutely. I will have it absolutely done by this week. There is an update on the material on all the court sites on will and testament. If people haven't had a chance to have a look, have a look. The the delay was that. Under so this, each state has its own laws on wills and testament, as you are aware. Yeah, each state has it. Yep. As the same as uh, rules on intestate, intestacy. Yeah. But they are all subject to the Big Mama rules, the rules of the Commonwealth. So it goes back to the Wills Act of 1837. Under the Wills Act of 1837, you do not have to record your public will with the court rolls, you can record the fact that you have a private will with the court rolls. That is all that is required. That means that we can have your will recorded through Eucadia and all that is recorded as the uh, will and testament deed is really the referencing to the key parts of your will. The contents of it can remain private. So I just wanted to get these things clear first. And we've got them clear. We can now move to templates. All right, Ron? Okay, great. Okay. Thanks again. Sure. Bye. Bye. Uh, just a quick one before we get to the next caller. Uh, Judith just followed up on uh, my answer to the time converter uh, by mentioning, it says, uh, Article 57, um, uh, I will. Uh, I see that there's a, a typo there. I, I, I presume that that is a uh, a typo there, Judah. If you can give me the link that you got that from, um, is that from the Globe Union uh, or is it from another one? Uh, I'll go and have a look at that. And uh, if there are typos, and there are many typos, I'll have it corrected. Thanks again for for your your question there, and, and let me know that. Uh, we'll go to the next. Um, uh, I see you got the answer there. Let's go to the next caller, and then we'll keep going through your questions. Hello, I've got uh, uh, Please Enterprises on. Can you hear us? Uh, yeah, it's Lynn again. I got knocked off. I must have hit a hot button because my computer, my Skype, everything went completely blank on me, and my computer uh. shut down. So I must have I hit a nerve or something. But anyway, I was finished, and and I just wanted to say. Thanks, because um, this is where I learn the tools to keep on going. I appreciate it. Well, Lynn, you help everyone else. And it is, f f first we need to, you know, the theme tonight, which was you know, the power of you, is to say this is what we need first. We need, we need to believe in ourselves. We need to know who we are first. So when we come together, it is an extraordinarily powerful thing because as a, as a community then, we're in the right mind to make best use. Yes? That's right. Good on you, Lynn. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. Bye. Uh, let's see. We've got a uh, question here. I'm going to wrap up in a few minutes. We're almost uh, out of time. I want to appreciate and say thank you for everyone who's spoken tonight. Everyone's asked a question. Everyone's made a comment. Uh, Guest 28 asked, do uh, do use the term peaceful common people in your court filings. Uh, there is a there is the argument of using terms like peaceful inhabitant and, and other terms which have a relevance to international law, the Geneva Convention and the Hague Conventions, knowing that we are declared enemies of the state, that when we declare ourselves a peaceful inhabitant we are effectively identifying ourselves as a non-combatant, which really reduces the court's belligerence and use of force against us. I must say that we haven't done enough work in this particular area 
whilst we've been focusing on other areas. But I would suggest that when we do some further research on the Geneva Convention and the Hague Convention, that in the right context, words such as peaceful inhabitant, albeit I haven't researched this and the researchers haven't done enough work yet on this, but words to that effect may have the uh, practical effect of limiting the kind of coercion that the corporation can engage in when we have identified ourselves as a uh, non-combatant. Uh, so th th these are things that we've still got to pursue. But it's a good question. And I've got to say, I, I can't give you a firm answer yet. But there are a number of people who absolutely swear by the use of that kind of language in filings. Yes. Um, let's have a look at... And there were some answers there in the, in the call about the meaning of prejudice and without pre uh, with and without prejudice. Thank you for those. Uh, question by Katberg. Question, can we use the position of general executor to combat credit card debts that are in default? Yes, let's talk about credit card debts and let's talk about uh, mortgages again. We spoke about this last week and I'll make this the, if people don't mind, I'll, I'll make this the last uh, answer for tonight and then we'll wrap up. The issue of a debt through a credit card or through a mortgage is that as the general executor, we, we need to walk a very straight line here. If you signed a contract, your signature as general executor is extremely, extremely valuable. That's why they can monetize it. Now, if you have signed it, that means you have admitted to engaging in a, a contract where a debt is generated for some consideration. So I would not be contesting the debt. However, what occurs with both a credit card and a mortgage is that the institution has engaged in the commercialization and additional transactions concerning that contract, founded on that contract, necessary because of the existence of that contract, for which they have not provided any fair disclosure. So the argument should not be to dispute how the money was created. When people say, I'm going to go into the credit card and say, I created the money, it was created out of thin air, you punched in some numbers, it's all red herrings, all of it. Probably why we get told time and time again to argue it, because it's, 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 it's a losing argument. The argument on a credit card is, I signed a contract as general executor. I agreed to certain terms. One of them was that you could... Um, you could convert this. You could go and monetize my valuable signature. Now, but you haven't told me whether you did. You haven't told me uh, whether you uh, uh, went and did that. You haven't told me what other considerations came in for this. So we don't have a complete accounting. If you sold this debt, you haven't divulged it. And you can't bring an action against the estate, which I'm the general executor, without providing a clear accounting unless that is fraud or unjust enrichment. Your claim is incomplete. And that's the same thing with a mortgage. By the time you work out the fact that they have sold and haven't told you and you need a tracing for it, by the time you've accounted for the upkeep and maintenance of the property, they owe you money. So I would say to you, absolutely, you have the ability to stand as the role of general executor in regards to credit card debt, but you must argue it from an accounting perspective. The judge and everyone else in that court of trustees, get them to do their job. The banks come in, they've made a claim, they've refused to provide the full accounting, provide the full accounting, and then if there's something owed, yes, you owe it. 
But until the bank discloses everything they've done based on that contract, you don't have clear accounting. And if a court wants to act without clear accounting in defiance of the executor, then the court will have to pay. Because that is a fundamental breach of fiduciary duties. I hope that makes it clear. Thank you, everybody. We covered a huge amount tonight. I appreciate everything that people are providing. The research that many of you are doing is fantastic. I hope what we share with you helps you in your cases, in your, in your matters. Remember, no matter what is happening to you, your power and your ability to change this world is profound. And I look forward to speaking to you all next time, the same time next week, Wednesday. Thank you and good night.